My name is Megan. I'm a writing and study skills tutor at the Wake Tech ILC. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning, because I know it can be really challenging to determine the difference between the two. So first, I'm just going to give the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition. Of course, always make sure you consult your course textbook to have the most accurate definition for what your class is talking about. So for inductive reasoning, the definition is inference of a generalized conclusion from particular instances. And the definition for deductive reasoning is inference in which the conclusion about particulars follow necessarily from general or universal premises. Now, both of those definitions are pretty dense. So now we're going to break it down and talk about what that means. So Kellogg Community College has this lovely graphic. There are a lot of great graphics um, available on deductive versus inductive reasoning online. The main thing is you just want to make sure it comes from a reliable source like a college or university. So in this graphic, it's explained that the difference between inductive and deductive has to do with whether that reasoning comes from a general principle, applying that to a specific case, or applying a specific case in order to determine a general principle. So when it comes to inductive reasoning, you are looking at one specific case or several specific cases of a certain incident to then apply to a general principle. Whereas, whereas deductive reasoning is taking the knowledge of a general principle to apply it to a specific case that you might be experiencing. So even that can be a little dense. So I'm going to give some more examples. So inductive reasoning. Here are some examples of inductive reasoning, um, and that is going from specific case to a general statement. So for example, your lips have swelled the last three times you've eaten nuts. One might conclude from that that you have an allergy to nuts. You go to a grocery store on Friday, and you see that all the employees are wearing red shirts. You might infer from that that Friday is wear a red shirt day. You were attacked by a large dog as a child. You may now infer or induce that large dogs are something you should be afraid of. So the thing that all of these examples have in common is you take a specific incident or several incidents of a specific occurrence. And from there, you make a general rule that you think applies. For example, regarding eating nuts. You don't know that you have an allergy to nuts, really, but from your experience, the things that you've seen, you can now determine that as a general rule for yourself. Let me now go into talking about deductive reasoning and talking about the two together can help further clarify the distinction. So here are some examples of deductive reasoning. You go from that general rule to apply to your specific situation. Mammals nurse their young. That's just a scientific principle that generally is taken to be true. From that, you can assume that your cat will nurse her young when she has babies. Um, Friday is casual day at work, so therefore you'll wear a t-shirt and jeans on Friday. Smartphones have cameras, therefore Sarah's smartphone has a camera. So notice the distinction here, specifically looking at the, the clothing option example. So in the inductive reasoning, um, we notice when we go to the store, everyone wears shirts on Fridays, and we then assume that Friday is wear a red shirt day. Whereas in this case, we're aware of the rule that Friday is casual day. Perhaps we work at a job that tells us that rule ahead of time. So deductive reasoning requires some kind of knowledge um, ahead of time, a specific rule, quote unquote, that you then apply to a situation. It's important to note that with all of these situations, any of them could be an example of inductive or deductive reasoning, even if it's not a correct assumption. So you may have noticed as you were looking at the examples on the previous slides that not all of these are necessarily true. So for example, you were attacked by a large dog as a child, now you have induced that large dogs are something you should be afraid of. We may say logically, well, we know that isn't always the case. 
However, that is a valid statement of inductive reasoning. So you have to think about these as separate things. Just because it's a valid interpretation of inductive or deductive reasoning doesn't necessarily mean that it is a true statement. So for example, also um, going to the grocery store, seeing all the employees wearing red shirts, determining that Friday is wear a red shirt day, that may not in fact be the case. They may be wearing red shirts for some other reason and um, you may not be aware of it. So you cannot say for sure that that is a fact. Um, and finally, smartphones have cameras. Not all of them. Maybe Sarah's smartphone camera is damaged or maybe she has a very basic smartphone that does not have a camera for some reason. You cannot necessarily assume just because it is correctly formatted as an inductive or deductive statement that it's therefore going to be a fact. And this is one of the things that can be so challenging in um, a class where it talks about inductive versus deductive reasoning. Often your instructor isn't asking you to determine whether or not this thing is correct. They're simply asking you what kind of reasoning is being applied. And sometimes that can be a little frustrating. So it's important to sort of separate those two things in your mind about inductive reasoning. You can never be absolutely certain if something is correct or not. Um, because you never know that general rule. You can only assume. Whereas deductive reasoning can lead to certainty because you have knowledge of that overarching rule already. So some last things to keep in mind. One, always make sure that you're following the guidelines of whatever philosophical theory or classwork that you're studying. Make sure you're reading the instructions and following those guidelines. Make sure that the data you have is reliable. If you're trying to reason inductively or deductively, if the data you have is not reliable, then it's not going to be valid. Also, make sure you're using your critical thinking skills so you don't fall prey to logical fallacies. Um, logical fallacies are simply uh, illogical statements that look like they could be correct. So, for example, hasty generalization is a big one when it comes to inductive reasoning. You may assume just because you saw something one time that this is always going to be the fact. And as we discussed regarding people wearing red shirts on Fridays, that isn't necessarily the case. There may not be a specific rule about that. So it's important not to make hasty generalizations and always make sure you are thinking things through and using reliable data. Thanks so much. And please come to the ILC. If you've got any other questions about inductive or deductive reasoning, we'd be happy to help you out.